Don't leave me hanging. It's go time. Hey everybody, this is Josh, and here we have another splendid game of StarCraft II. Fanatic MSI, Kawaii Rice is the Red Terran down here in the bottom left corner of MLG Shakuras Plateau. And up in the top right, once again, we have Evil Genius's Strife Crow. He's the yellow Zerg up here in the top right. Did I just say top right twice? Maybe I did. Maybe I said it three times. No one will ever know. But I do want to point something out before this match really gets any further, and that is that this is MLG Shakuras Plateau. What does that mean? Well, for one thing, it means cross positions only. That's right, MLG has modified the map so that it is a two-player map, essentially. So Strife Crow knows where Kawaii Rice is. Kawaii Rice knows where Strife Crow is. And another thing I want to point out is the MLG Shakuras Plateau was modified from the original Shakuras Plateau, which means destructible rocks in the back door. The new version of Shakuras Plateau, which you may be seeing on the 1v1 Battle.net ladder pool right now, doesn't have these destructible rocks. It just has a cliff, like a normal, normal cliff, just like here and here, just a normal one tier cliff that Reapers and Colossi can walk over, but essentially nothing else can get over, and uh, there are no destructible rocks right here. Instead, destructible rocks separate these, um, this sort of back corridor with these third, plausible third bases, so the map is a little bit old school, and it's a little bit different than the old school one was anyway, because it is a two-player map. Only cross positions are possible. Let's see if that affects the play of our, our two heroes here, Strife Crow and Kawaii Rice. Strife Crow is going to go hatch first at 15, like we saw on Zelnaga Caverns. Nothing surprising there, so Spawning Pool should be following that up quickly. Strife Crow did choose this map, uh, which means Kawaii Rice did not veto it. It means he probably vetoed Scrap Station, which I would not blame him for doing. That is a much smaller 2v2 map, and it's hard to stop Zerg. Uh, from expanding on that map. Kawaii Rice could actually send a bunch of bunkers right here and sort of shut this all this whole thing down. If you saw Select versus Ret, maybe I'll cast that game, but um, if you didn't see Select versus Ret at MLG, there was a pretty sick play on Shakuras Plateau, I'll just tell you that. Maybe I will go cast that next, but Strife Crow versus Kawaii Rice for the time being. And dead drone, dead scouting drone, Kawaii Rice. Very good marine mic micro there to get that drone killed off. And Koi Rice does finally have a scouting SCV over here in Strife Crow land, so now we're taking Fanatic MSI KR Vision. There are no Zerglings or offensive units of any type to be able to slow this SCV down, so he's going to get a look at everything. He sees the spawning pool spawning, uh, spawning pool completing, I guess, right as he arrives in that main. He sees the hatch is complete, and he saw one gas in there, so he can kind of make some predictions about that. Mutaling Bling, probably going to be Strife Crow's unit choice once again, as I said earlier. It is a pretty good strategy against Terran players, pretty much no matter what they're doing. Mutalisks are good for mobility, of course. Terrans do have the marine mobility. Ooh, three barracks coming up here quickly, and a command center building. So he is going mineral only build for this uh, second game in a best of three series being played for MLG Dallas winners round four and I did double check this is actually a round of 16 there are only 16 players left undefeated in the tournament at this point and Kawhi Rice and Strife Crow are just two of them Poke Bunny and Naniwa from yesterday's games if you haven't seen those go watch them after this but um, just four of the remaining 16 undefeated players in that winners bracket so they have each won uh, at least three best of threes to get to this point not bad at all. But unfortunately, one of them will have to lose this best of three series and drop down into the lower bracket. But fortunately, it's a double elimination tournament, so they won't even be eliminated yet. Pretty sweet tournament setup that MLG has. Now we see that command center floating down to the low ground here at the natural. Still not an orbital command yet. We did see on Zelnaga Caverns he went for that orbital first, but it's a little harder to secure your natural on that map compared to just putting down three barracks and spamming marines, which is super easy to do. You don't even need a Vespian gas to do it. Kawaii Rice is des destroying his destructible rocks here with just a single marine. Not sure if you saw that a moment ago. Kind of an interesting choice. Not sure what that is going to end up meaning. <laughs> uh, looks like he might want to take his third base as he's getting a, a third command center very quickly. Might want to take his third base over here in this uh, back hallway corridor thing at the Smiley Face expansion. We'll see if that is indeed his plan soon enough. Strife Crow getting up two more extractors very quickly. Still no Baneling Nest. He is getting the lair first. Oh wait, there is a Baneling Nest. Where are you, little little nest? Here it is, tucked inside by the ramp. 
Spire should be the first thing we see after that lair completes once again. He is macroing like crazy. Let's look at the worker count just to be sure. 37 harvesters against 27. But if we look at the army value, I bet Kawaii Rice is way ahead. 650 minerals against 75. Yeah, I'd say Kawaii Rice is slightly ahead. Let's just look at the unit count here. 13 marines against 3 zerglings. That's what would happen right now if Kawaii Rice just said, hey, I'm going to come attack you. Uh, Strife Crow does have mm, a couple of larvae that he could make some reserve zerglings with. Does he have zergling speed yet? Yes, he certainly does. So he will be able to see if Kawaii Rice moves out with this little spotter zergling, and he does have both Zelnaga Towers under his control. So he may not have an army, but he does have map vision. Spire coming up right next to the Banely Nest, as you would expect. Spine Crawler coming up to sort of block the ramp, sort of block the hatch, but basically Hellions could just scoot right in here and get to these drones very easily, luckily for Strife Crow. Kawhi Rice does not seem interested in Hellions this time around. Instead, he really, really wants to take this third base quickly. He's maybe imagining that Strife Crow is going to go super macro mode since he's a Zerg on Shakura's Plateau, so Kawhi Rice is not going to leave anything to chance. He's going to expand twice pretty quickly in this game. It's already there. Oh, look at that. Look at that on the minimap. It's like a red clown nose for the smiley face expansion. Aww. That's so cute, Kawaii Rice. Overseer flying over for Strife Crow. Take Strife Crow vision and see everything that Strife Crow sees, which is everything in Kawaii Rice's base. He is going to lose the Overseer. No, he isn't. Oh, my God. He got away with four HP. Not bad at all. There was a Changeling dropped as well, but he was very quickly murdered by the Terran forces of Kawaii Rice. Spire about to complete. How much money do you have? Bank Strife Crow. About five Mutalisks worth, and he does have the supply as well, so he makes four of them and also gets plus one flyer attacks very quickly. So Banelings speed about to finish. That's part one, Zerglings with speed. Part two, Banelings with speed. Part three, Mutalisks all coming together here. Strife Crow is going to want to continue spreading this creep as fast as he possibly can. Might even want his queens to be doing double duty over there, dropping creep tumors to spam their way across to Kawaii Rice. Kawaii Rice actually has three bases up before Strife Crow even expands for a second time. So he is really, really... Uh, aware and knows that Zerg opponents tend to over expand or expand quickly so Kawaii Rice is not going to fall behind here. If we look at just army value, Kawaii Rice is ahead by about seven supply. Harvesters he's even, holy moly, so three bases against two. Strife Crow just made a round of six drones evidently but Kawaii Rice is right there with him. Oh the first mutas are arriving here. Oh the first mutas are so confused. What's going on they say. Where are the units of Kawaii Rice? I'm going to kill some SCVs. Oh, there's a turret in the mineral line. Oh, there's a ton of marines. Maybe I should leave after losing one of my compadres. Did he see this base over here? Wow, looks like he saw a mule death animation there. That's kind of weird. Uh, Zergling bites the dust over here to some nice bunker placement. Turrets and good spots here for Kawaii Rice. These three mutas are not going to be able to do anything to any of these bases thanks to those good turret placements. Lots of lings and banelings starting to be made. Actually, not that many. I'm surprised to see that. Still more drones coming along. These mutalisks are going to bunch up here now, and we've got eight instead of just three. They're going to bounce in here to this third base, but turret number two finishes up, and I'm not sure what they're going to actually be able to do. Harvester count once again. Strife Crow and Kawaii Rice very, very even. Army value Kawaii Rice is pretty decently, uh, I would say, ahead, but the mutalisk value is hard to gauge there because mutas can do quite a lot of damage. Damage, it really depends on where they are on the map. If Kawaii Rice can't respond quickly, Mutalisks could be worth 10 times their value. If Kawaii Rice can react quickly, Mutalisks could be worth nothing because Marines are so friggin' good. Now that the starport is done, starting to create some medevacs, it looks like Kawaii Rice's forces are starting to be pretty formidable. We see vehicle weapons level 1, combat shields, siege tech. Uh, marine weapons level 2 being researched. Combat shields are already done now. Are they actually just finished? Because I just said a moment ago that they were started. Five more turrets being put up. we got flyer attacks level 2, melee attacks level 2. Kawaii Rice really staying good with those upgrades. Stripe Crow trying to keep up, but trying to kill off these turrets, not a great investment for Stripe Crow. He lost three mutas there very quickly for the price of one turret. And that's, that's one of those problems with Mutalisks that I said a second ago. They could be worth very, very little unless you're able to surprise your opponent and kill a lot of 
SCVs and economy, then they're just not worth very much. Strife Crow taking a fourth base here finally, so he is going to eventually pull ahead of Kawhi Rice in terms of number of bases and harvester count. Actually, Kawhi Rice ahead 82 to 74 now. That's pretty ridiculous. Kawhi Rice hasn't even moved out of his base yet. He's just gone total turn, total turtle, total turtle Terran mode? <laughs> I was looking for a T word, couldn't think of one. Total turtle Terran tactics. But um, soon he will be moving out after he gets rid of these pesky mutas. He's just going to keep throwing up turrets. Easy mode. Terran tactics there. Lots of banelings coming along. Lots of speedlings finished now. Creep Highway is not even close to halfway finishing here. But Strife Crow looks like he wants to do an attack. He's got a lot of banelings here. He could actually blow down these barracks pretty quickly with those little guys and their centrifugal hooks. Their roly-poly banelings. So Strife Crow looks like he is going to soften up the front wall here a little bit. Is he going to build any more Banelings? He's making 16 more Lings. There's 17 more Banelings morphing somewhere. Kawhi Rice is starting to move already, though, through that back door. He just took out the hatch over there of a Strife Crow. Strife Crow doing a little bit of a base trade. Looks like he does want to try and take out as much as he can here in Kawhi Rice. Rice's base, but he just doesn't have that many Mutalisks left, and there's I'm not sure what he's going to be able to do. Kawhi Rice is just streaming out now. And that's pretty much all we're going to see out of Strife Crow. So now let's rejoin Kawhi Rice's main army. He's just sieging up, doing a little bit of leapfrog with those tanks. Siege, unsiege, siege, unsiege. He's got a boatload of marines here. Let's just look at the unit count. 47 marines total. And those siege tanks are going to help immensely against these speedlings and banelings. Strife Crow, if he had not done that attack at the front of Kawhi Rice's base, he would have a lot more units over here to try and defend against this. Now we see the Banelings rolling in. Oh my god, they do kill quite a lot. Kawhi Rice not as solid with his micro as he was in the first game, but a lot of Marines do survive. Three medevacs up still as well. These Marines with stem and nice, nice upgrades. 2-0 upgrades, soon to be 3-0 upgrades, do manage to split and kill off those last few Banelings. So now Strife Crow looking a little bad here. Uh, he's got the army value, but I don't know where all of it is. Strife Crow taking a lot of fire on his overlords and lings and queens as they pop out. There is a macro hatch there I didn't even notice before. Ooh, Kawhi Rice happens upon a little treasure trove of queens and baneling eggs. Gets a lot of value there for his marines. Killing off a lot of Strife Crow's units before they're even hatched. But now the mutas are going to come in here, finish off the marines, finish off those undefended medevacs, defenseless medevacs, are going to go down. And that is it for that little skirmish. Wow, that was pretty interesting stuff there. Sorry I couldn't cover all of that at one time. I tried, but um, I didn't realize Kawhi Rice was already over there at the third, nuking down that hatch. Thank goodness for picture in picture. We didn't actually miss anything. Important, anyway. <laughs> Kawhi Rice rebuilding just a single bunker. Probably going to actually maybe not even rebuild this barracks here at the front. Now that that hole is there, it's going to let his tanks and marines just escape there easily. We got medevacs overhead. Lots of mutalisks here from Strife Crow once again. Eight of them trying to come along and do some more damage. Poke holes in Kawhi Rice's defense. Don't see near as many turrets as we saw earlier in the game. It looks like Strife Crow did manage to kill a lot of those off with his little remaining force of lings and banelings when he was doing that attack. So the mutas have a little bit of more free reign than they had before. But Kawhi Rice moving again. And this is the old style Shakura Swateau. I just want to mention that again. So these siege tanks can hit the mineral line, and there's no land bridge here. Kawhi Rice is actually going to elevate her across the little gap as well, shooting down these queens, baiting them into the tank fire. Marines actually getting hit by their own siege tank splash, but it's not that big of a deal. Stripe Crow trying to do a little bit of a counter. It looks like on the mini map, just sort of huddled around outside of Kawhi Rice's base, not doing anything right now. Stripe Crow loses that hatch as well so now he's on what one mining base let's look at the income tab real quick whoa look at that Kawhi Rice four times the mineral income about the same gas income and seven more harvesters than our Zerg player Strife Crow so Kawhi Rice's economy looking pretty stout now we see Strife Crow rolling in from the left side and I do say rolling in because there are a lot of banelings here is Kawhi Rice going to pick up in his medevac before the banelings get there everything dies Strife Crow killing off all those forces of Kawhi Rice. Kawhi Rice does have a little bit of a sneaky drop over here, though. On the left side of Strife Crow's main, six Marines and a medevac do survive. They stem up, run in, kill off a bunch of drones, mining gas, might even get a nice queen kill here as well. Needlesk should have no problem cleaning this up, of course. But now, 
Fawai Rice moving with his real force. And finally, Thor is here. He's got plus two weapon upgrades. The Marines have plus three weapon upgrades, about to have plus one armor as well. They are coasting through here. They're going to blow up these rocks. They're going to kill this hatchery that's trying to rebuild. Strife Crow does have this base over here. He transfers a ton of drones over from his natural as that base starts to get mined out. And look at this. These siege tanks are so awesome they can hit a hatchery from a mile away strife crow looking at the minimap looks like he's moving around with some mutalisks right now trying to take down these turrets and orbital command or planetary fortress rather before it actually gets constructed these tanks should actually start being elevated over by this uh, medevac and then he could actually start moving into the natural and the main. So Kawaii Rice is going to cancel the Planetary Fortress. These Mutalisks are going to fly away from the couple of Thors that Kawaii Rice has placed strategically over here by that base. Not bad at all. So income tab once again. It looks like they are sort of evened up as Kawaii Rice's natural gets mined out finally. Harvester count still very even. Army value. Kawaii Rice is at 160 supply against only 93 for Strife Crow, so that could be very, very difficult for him to try to come back from, especially if he keeps losing hatcheries like this. But here we go, another huge attack. Lots of Banelings mutas still alive. They are going to roll through everything, it looks like. Few mutas surviving here are going to be able to clean out those siege tanks. Kawaii Rice once again surviving with only a handful of Marines and a Medivac. So Strife Crow still alive. But Kawhi Rice still vastly in the lead, 148 to 73 now. Ooh, and Kawhi Rice with this solid, solid siege tank placement once again. Shakura's Plateau is so nasty for this. You just need one siege tank and you can kill every hatchery that your opponent has on the map. <laughs> and Strife Crow is going to find this little contingent over here, finish that off as well. So Strife Crow's alive, but um, he's kind of like a vegetable right now. He's got some production facilities. He's got three hatches trying to get up a fourth. He's got a bunch of idle drones right here just waiting to be able to mine again. Can't actually mine out of here because of one siege tank. This is a lost temple all over again in my mind and Strife Crow just GG is good luck in the tourney he says. Strife Crow has no real economy, doesn't have much of an army, he knows he's behind. Kawaii Rice uh, has had this solid economy almost all game. There was only one little part where Strife Crow actually managed to damage the economy at all and um, he just doesn't feel confident that this game is going anywhere. So Strife Crow GG's. Kawaii Rice will move on to winner's bracket round five. Strife Crow drops into the lower bracket of MLG Dallas 2011. And that's it for this best of three series. Thank all of you very much for watching. Once again, I'm going to be casting a ton of games this week to make up for the last two weeks of no casts. I uh, hope you guys will all stick around with me. Tell your friends. Tell everybody that I'm back. I'm casting games once again. And we will all have a happy, fun StarCraft II time together. And don't forget, NASL has started now, North American Star League. I believe Kawhi Rice is in the North American Star League. I'm not 100% sure on that. I'll have to double check. Shouldn't have even said anything. But anyway, NASL TV started once again, and I'm going to be doing Joshi's picks every day for those. So stick around and check out your picks. Make some picks of your own. We'll see who's right, who's wrong, who wins, who loses. It'll be all very exciting. Thanks very much for watching. I'll see you guys soon.